I, uh, in terms of history, it makes more sense to talk about uh, uh, Phil Zimmerman first because we've got more concepts, um, important concepts, but uh, well, there's a few here anyway. So we're going to talk about the crypto wars because that uh, partly leads into why the government was so upset with Zimmerman. But anyway, um, well, I... Yeah, cryptography um, is a, a military tool, um, and uh, but it's <laughs> well, the International Traffic and Arms Regulations from the U.S. Uh, refers to it as a dual-use munition. In other words, it can be used for uh, civilian purposes, but it also has military applications. So. Um, now we've got something that a certain class of people, um, the military, uh, want to keep secret, um, but other people have uses for. Um, and in particular, um, in the 80s, uh, in the United States particularly, a, the, the law enforcement community uh, started to worry about what happens if the crooks started to use cryptography and all of a sudden we can't um, uh, do wire taps and phone taps and intercept well you never could intercept mail That's, anyway um, uh, we'll talk about that in networking um, the uh, so they you know they made representations and, and uh, a lot of people in the government agreed that they should limit the ability of people to use cryptography, and particularly to export cryptography. As I say, they had these international traffic and arms regulations, and you were allowed to export cryptography, but only in a weakened state. Um, you couldn't uh, export a crypto product that had a key length longer than 40 bits. Um, and at the time, 128 bits was, was considered secure. So, uh, this, again, you know, this is mostly symmetric encryption. Um, asymmetric encryption wasn't being widely used at this point. So, um, uh, we've, we've got that going on, and, and the, the government is passing laws and, and uh, that sort of thing. Now, um, there's a, a, you know, it's, it's a problem here because nowadays, I mean, we use uh, encryption for a whole bunch of things. Everything that goes on on the, uh, on the internet, um, you know, just simply signing on to a, a website for a session is protected by encryption. Uh, certainly if you use a credit card to buy something, make a purchase, that's protected by encryption. So all of internet commerce is relying on encryption. Um, uh, but, you know, and this is, you know, still the days before the, the Internet is very widely used, but, um, you know, some people are seeing that uh, there may be a uh, legitimate use um, for encryption uh, for, you know, civil civilian activities. And, um, you know, but... Again, law enforcement sort of has uh, the ear of the uh, powers that be, uh, legislators and so forth, and, and so they're passing uh, laws uh, to restrict its use, to um, uh, restrict export, um, and these types of things. Now, uh, this is... Um, well, it has an inherent problem. Um, and again, you know, when we get into uh, Zimmerman's story, we'll go into some of the details here. But um, encryption is, uh, it's, it's hard to protect because, you know, as Kirchhoff's law states, you know, you, you can't rely on the secrecy of the algorithm. So everybody is using open algorithms. Everybody is publishing their algorithms. Well, everybody except the NSA, I guess. Um, so we have um, we have a, an inherently 
a difficult situation. Um, you know, you, you can't uh, sell this this uh, crypto stuff to uh, you know worldwide because there's the export controls. Um, you have to weaken even uh, civilian systems and that sort of thing. Well, uh, okay, now we come to skipjack. Um, there's, there's still this tension. Basically, um, you know, some states, uh, Saudi Arabia, you know, and you, you take a computer to Saudi Arabia, you've broken the law because it's illegal to use encryption in Saudi Arabia. You know, that's, that's officially the law on the books. But, of course, every computer uh, that we've got relies on some form of encryption at some point. So, um, you know, there's that. Um, the French had uh, a um, restriction. You know, they said you couldn't use civilian encryption uh, that was any stronger than 40-bit uh, keys. Um, and uh, a friend of mine had to uh, deal with issues of selling security software to uh, the French market uh, trying to get around this, this restriction, trying to uh, deal with the fact that, that you had to, you know, uh, strengthen what you were doing because a 40-bit key isn't, you know, that good. Um, the, the United States still hasn't really passed laws saying, no, you can't encrypt anything. But um, there's still, you know, this, this thing. So they come up with this idea called key escrow. And, and this means that somebody holds the keys. Whatever keys, you don't just randomly choose any key you want. Somebody holds the keys, the government issues the keys, somebody holds them. When law enforcement thinks they have a good need, you know, they can go to a court, they can, you know, make a case, they can get access to the key. Okay, um, that uh, sounds like a good idea, but, you know, you've got to have a system um, that guarantees that the keys that you are, in fact, using are in fact legitimately issued by the government and, and that they're escrowed and, and all the rest of it. So um, they produce this thing called Skipjack. Uh, this is the algorithm. Um, it uh, is implemented in hardware in something called Clipper Chip, um, it, but it can be implemented in software. Um, it has a part of it called the LEAF, the Law Enforcement Access Field. And so uh, we've got this uh, we've got this issue where uh, uh, it, you know, it, it confirms, yes, uh, you can uh, trust that this key has been issued by the government. So, okay, this is, uh, and, and they say, okay, you know, here we've got this, you know, system, it's, it's good, it's secure, it's useful, uh, use it. And everybody says, go soak your head, because they haven't said what the, the algorithm is. So, um, the government uh, finally gives a big sigh and say, okay, you know, here it is. Uh, we've opened the, you know, description. Here's the algorithm. Uh, it's, it's good. It's strong. It's useful. Uh, go ahead and use it. And so people look at the algorithm, and this is designed by the National Security Agency. Like I said... You know, they've got more mathematicians per pound than anybody outside of, of math uh, faculties. They understand this stuff. They, they are good, smart people. But they should have opened it for discussion in the first place because within three weeks of this announcement, somebody sticks their hand up and says, hey, you made a mistake here, and finds a weakness. And it's not actually in the, the encryption part of the algorithm. It's in the leaf, which is the whole point of having this system in the first place. And it turns out it is trivially easy to fake a key that hasn't actually been issued by the government. And, and so, you know, the whole system collapses. And not, you know, I mean, the skipjack is still a, a you know, reasonably strong algorithm, but who's going to use it because there's no purpose to it anymore. Anyway.